What is up guys, DZ Fear coming at you from the Galactic Gods channel. I am back today to show you my updated Crystal Beast deck profile after the July 16th ban list. Um, this deck isn't necessarily competitive, but without the gin lock in the game, you can at least play it at a local level, possibly your regional level if you really want to be um, crazy. But uh, here's my Crystal Beast deck profile. It's a deck I really, really like, and I think this is one of the better builds out there. Um, so to start off, we have three... Pegasus. Um, this is like the only all-around good Crystal Beast monster. Um, the other ones kind of suffer either from effects or stats. Um, but Pegasus is like the only one that we're going to be playing three of because it's one you want to abuse the most. Um, it's clearly the best one. Um, we're also playing two Crystal Beast Topaz Tiger. Uh, this guy is... he's not terrible. Um, the key point about Topaz Tiger is that he's a beast. Um, that'll come in handy later. Uh, we're also playing two Cobalt Eagle um, once again, his effect isn't very great. His effect is actually almost entirely useless. Um, but the important part is, is that he's a wind monster, so you can overlay for a Chidori with him. Um, that's kind of a cool use. Um, and then we're also playing two Carbuncle. Um, I'm really reluctant to play two of this card because it just sucks to draw so bad. Um, but you really have to play two just in case you do draw. If you only play one and you draw it, then you have none in deck for uh, Beacon. Um, so that's kind of rough. Um, I've considered playing a card called Good Goblin Housekeeping in this deck. Um, basically what that card does is you can draw one card and then place um, a card from your hand on top of your deck. So that's kind of neat to get rid of the Carbuncles. But uh, you just kind of got to live with it, I guess. Uh, and then we're playing two Summoner Monk. This is basically just to get to your Pegasus first turn. Um, we're playing lots and lots of spells. Over half the deck of spell cards. So you'll always have a target to discard with him. Um, he's this really fantastic card. Um, we're also playing to round up the monster lineup, just three copies of Effect Failure. Um, Effect Failure is really good right now. I've considered playing Maxi, I just don't have the room for it. Um, but I think Effect Failure is really powerful. Stopping Trish is definitely necessary, but like I said, you're not going to take this to like a competitive event. But just stopping like fringe decks from getting their effects off is really cool. Um, that's it for the monster lineup. It's pretty slim. Um, if you want to play this deck, you really just want to be drawing spells all the time, except for Pegasus. Um, none of the Crystal Beast monsters are really good to draw besides Pegasus because they don't really do anything. Um, and that's why I've kind of minimized the amount of Crystal Beast monsters I'm playing. Um, for the spells, and it is a hefty lineup. First off, we're playing three Pot of Duality, as well as two Upstar Goblin. Um, I really want to fit in a third Upstar Goblin. I couldn't find the space for it. Basically, you want to see... You just want to see your cards as fast as possible, as early as possible. Um, these help you get to your first turn Pegasus. And I, I don't think you can play a sec without them. Um, you could maybe play without the upstarts, but I really think it helps the consistency a lot to just play these cards. Um, and definitely has shown in testing that it's good to play them. Uh, we're also playing three copies of Ancient City Rainbow Ruins. This card has a variety of helpful effects, but the main ones that you're going to be using are the four and five effects. The one that lets you draw a card and the one that lets you special summon one from your back row. Um, all the other effects are kind of irrelevant. The half damage one is pretty cool because it allows you to s uh, survive a lot longer than you would have normally. But uh, in general, you're just using this to like um, as like a late game ender card. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, for the other crystal beast cards or, or the crystal cards we're playing, I guess um, three beacon, obviously like the best. I would say the best crystal beast spell card. Um, we're also playing three copies of Crystal Promise. This one isn't as good as Beacon, but it's obviously better late game because Beacon needs a target in deck um, to work. Um, we're playing one Crystal Tree. A lot of people exclude this from their lists. I don't think that's correct. Um, the important part about Tree is that it allows you, if you open Pegasus Beacon, to get it uh, get the Beacon off first turn. Because um, you can Pegasus, place a Pegasus, um, after you activate the Tree, obviously, and then send the Tree to the Graveyard to place another guy and then Beacon for Carbuncle and get three guys on the field. Uh, that's a pretty powerful turn one. Um, one rare value. This card's decent. Um, it's really just for accelerating your draws into your better cards. I don't think I would play more than one, and it's definitely cuttable if you're looking for something to cut. Um, and I'm playing Crystal Blessing. I wouldn't play this card if I wasn't playing rare value. Um, neither of them are like amazing, but the Blessing is really good with rare value because you like get rid of one to draw two, and then you place two from your grave. Um, and then one Crystal Abundance. Uh, I don't really like Crystal Abundance as a card because most of the time that you have four set up, you're just going to win anyway. Um, all you would need to draw at that point would be like a Beacon, a Promise, a Rainbow Ruins, like anything, um, and you'll just be so far ahead. But like it is, 
I guess it's nice to have the option. It's just like a bl total blowout card. Um, so that's why we do that. Um, I'm also playing three copies of Ayers Rock Sunrise. This is where Topaz Tiger being a beast comes in handy. Um, you can basically just monster reborn a beast monster. And then your opponent's monsters lose attack equal to, like, it's like 100. Um, yeah, it's 100 points for every, uh, or 200 points for every beast, uh, plant or wing beast type monster in your graveyard. Um, so that's really cool. It combos um, with Pegasus and Topaz Tiger because you can bring them back. And then it's really cool because you can uh, make Ragna Zero after you activate this card and like uh, destroy stuff. That's a really neat thing that's come up several times. Um, we're also playing two MST. I think this card is necessary in this type of deck. You just want to like, in general, you can push through your opponent's back row, but you can't really push through floodgates like emptiness. So MST is really cool to get rid of those. Um, but like all your monsters like don't really die when they die, so you can like usually just push through back row, but for like floodgates, empty or uh, for floodgates, MST is really good. Um, one Regeki, just so we don't have to like even bother uh, pushing through monster cards. Um, if you have like a Regeki and a Rainbow Ruins with a Carbuncle, um, you can usually just win by just summoning f uh, five monsters and taking the game that way. And then we're playing a uh, single copy of Book. This card's really cool for dodging like monster effects. Um, like it. You can just use it when they summon stuff, you can dodge Valor with it, you can dodge back row with it, it's just really helpful. Um, especially when you need your Pegasus to resolve. Um, so that's it for the spells, as you can see there are quite a lot of them. Um, a lot of three of just to help your consistency. Uh, the only trap card we're playing is actually one Jar of Avarice. Uh, Jar of Avarice is really cool because you can uh, shuffle back your Carbuncles if you like draw them. But even cooler than that, you can actually shuffle back like your Beacons and Promises with this card. Because um, Jar of Avarice can shuffle back any five cards, um, so you can shuffle back like your spell cards and stuff. But Crystal Beast, seeing there's not a lot of good Crystal Beast monsters, um, it's cool to have just a total reset to put them all back in deck. Um, usually, I'll be putting back like two Pegasus, a Carbuncle, and then two Beacon or a Beacon and a Promise. That's what I find myself doing the most often. Um, and I've actually considered bumping that card to two, but uh, I don't know. Like drawing an early game is just really horrible, so that's why it's not at two. Um, for the extra deck, it's pretty much just a variety of rank 4s. Um, we have Lightning Chidori. This deck can make it really easily, so that's why we play it. Um, and Chidori is really cool. Um, it's not as cool as when it first came out, when there wasn't any Castell or 101 or anything, but it's still a really powerful card. Um, one, number 80. One, Cowboy. A Dweller. Diamond Direwolf. A lot of people think this card comes up in this deck, um, because you can Diamond Direwolf, like, uh, Pegasus, Tiger, um or uh, Eagle, and then like they go to the back row. That doesn't really come up very often, but just Diamond Dire Wolfing to like pop a back row and like just blowing up itself is usually uh, good enough to like get an OTK through. Um, and then a 101, Exiton Knight, Castell, uh, Ragnar Zero, Dagusto Armillo just to shuffle back resources, um, and then Carnagorgon, Diamond Crab King for an Out the Towers, Heartland Draco, um, you can keep this guy alive really long because, like, you, he can't be attacked when you have the Crystal Beasts in your spawn trap guard zone. Uh, so it's really cool in this deck. And then I just play his cards on, like, every rank 4 strategy. But uh, Ptolemy and a Diamond just for, like, Shadows and Burning Abyss. Um, but that's my Crystal Beast deck profile. Check out my channel if you want to. There's some cool stuff on there, I guess. And I will see you guys later. Goodbye.